Oh boy, did this one hit me by surprise. I was a huge fan of the previous game in the series thanks to its addictive mechanics and polished interface. King Kishin 2 takes what made the first game good and improves on the recipe in almost every single way. In the original game, your adventure took place in a medieval fantasy setting. This time around, however, it's modern day resorts, cities, and shopping malls. The game is presented in comic book style and all of the game's assets, menus, and backgrounds have been hand drawn. Everything feels really authentic. At its roots, King Kishing is a story-driven RPG game with a slot machine combat mechanic and persistent upgrades. The player is tasked with fighting through loads and loads of bad guys. Well, I guess that's technically incorrect. You see, after being awakened by a foolish traveler, the evil king, that's you, resurrects his compadres and immediately sets about laying waste to anyone that stands in their way. Each time you fight someone, a day is added to your tally and at the end of a chapter, your score is the total number of days accumulated. Ideally, you'd want to keep this number as low as possible, but yeah, that's not really going to happen. So sit down, buckle up, and get ready for some game mechanics. The enemies in King Kashin do not fight back. Consider this a war of attrition. You have a limited amount of moves, represented by cherries on the lower right corner of the screen. You spend these cherries, three at a time, to spin the reels. Run out of spins before you beat your foe, and you lose. The combat system works very similar to a real-life slot machine. Line up corresponding items and be rewarded. Each of the reels of the slot machine represents a particular battle component. The first represents your party members, the second your weapons, and the third represents the enemy. You hit the spin button to start the movement of the reels. The player can either hit the stop button to stop all three simultaneously, or stop each reel individually for a more methodical approach. Once the reels stop, actions are carried out. In order for any attack to work, the enemy has to be on the same line as either a party member or a weapon. Damage is based on the attack of the unit or weapon versus the resistance or weakness of the enemy to that particular attack type. Now it gets really interesting. If a unit, weapon and enemy are all on the same line, the unit and weapon attacks will be combined. In the case of a non-related combination, for example a necromancer and a gun, this will generally result in both attacks simply being added together. If on the other hand the unit and attack types match, say a fighter and a baseball bat, this is considered a critical hit. Not only will the damage be increased, but any special attack attributes assigned to the player will activate, which can significantly increase your damage output. In addition to units and weapons, players can also add bonus items to their loadout. These can either be passive, items that give you a boost but are not represented on the reels, or active, and can appear at random on all three reels. You'll come across items that increase the appearance of party members or weapons, items that grant the player additional cherries, chests, experience and coins. You can even activate an item that increases the possibility of a specific loot type appearing. As you progress through the game, new party members, weapons and bonus items can be found, usually by means of treasure chests obtained at the end of each battle. The number of loadout combinations available is unbelievably large and players will have to experiment with different techniques in order to pass some of the more difficult enemies. Later in the game, some of the enemies have different attributes, like immunities to attack types or shields that negate attacks. There's a few little bonus objectives to achieve, like secret fights and beating weapon masters. Weapon masters are resistant to certain weapon types. If you manage to beat them with that type of weapon, you're granted a special unique item in that category. Needless to say, the difficulty ramps up significantly after the first chapter. To make your adventure bearable, you'll have access to a host of upgrades that you can select from when you level up. Additional starting cherries, increased luck, or boosting an individual party member are but a few of the available upgrades. I'm not gonna lie, to an onlooker this title seems fairly shallow. Absolutely nothing could be further from the truth. King Kishing 2 is incredibly deep. I mean the amount of loadout customization available alone is enough to set it apart from other puzzle RPG hybrids. It's insanely addictive and will keep you occupied for a very long time. The game looks fantastic on the iPhone 5, although the larger screen real estate seems to be filled with a simplistic border rather than a specific UI redesign. King Kishin 2 will set you back $2.99, is universal and has absolutely no in-app purchases. There are three chapters available right now with the promise of more to come in the near future. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this slightly longer episode. Click that subscribe button for more great mobile gaming releases. This has been Alex for GameMob, that's www.gamemob.com.